Welcome everyone to this webinar. My name is Paul Bauer and I say this with all the humility in my heart that this is the dawn of a new day because as you begin to learn what I'm going to share, especially in the second half of this webinar, you will be astounded in the, in the degree and in the sense that it will help you tune into a part of you that in today's world has been squelched. It has been silenced. It has been turned off in some means, in some cases. So today's seminar, today's webinar is about the paradigm shift, how to free your mind. And when you do that, when your mind is free, your body then follows and you are in the present moment. You are in alignment. You are at peace. And from that place, you begin to move forward in your life with purpose and clarity and focus in ways that may astound you. So let's talk about something that prevents that. It's called what I call the great distraction. And it's more than just distraction, though. It's the, it's the pulling away of our own consciousness. It's the, the separation of our own awareness from our truth. And it's more than addiction or manipulation of things that pop up in your day. And it's like a mind virus. And I'm going to go into great detail what I mean by a mind virus. So what's a mind virus? In essence, it's an infectious piece of our culture that spreads rapidly throughout the population, altering people's thoughts and lives in their wake. Some examples of mind viruses are the Pokemon game, the Branch Davidian cult. And like a computer virus, they can program us to think and behave destructively or against our normal will. Other hidden mind viruses that we encounter almost every day include subtle things like text messages that you might get, emails that you might see across your stage, things that appear in the news, things that happen in your family system. They all tend to take us away from our focus of who we are, or at least our awareness in the moment. And a surprising fact is that your thoughts are not always your own original ideas because we often catch thoughts and energy from other people and other thought viruses. In other words, that those energies that go through other folks and other groups of people they tend to affect us. You might have heard this phrase that we are those five people that we are around most. In other words, their energy, their thoughts, their emotions, they affect us, not always just at the conscious level, but at a subconscious level. So what you'll learn in tonight's webinar is how to understand how your mind actually works and discover the destructive power of mind viruses and what you can do about them, because that's the real key. It's one thing to sense them, but then what do you do about them once you understand that something has been running your mind in the background? So there's a big if. If you're willing to set aside your current way of seeing and thinking, then you'll have access to a whole new world. In other words, if you're going to allow yourself to step back from your normal everyday habitual train of thoughts and really become the observer in your life, then you'll begin to see with new eyes, as William Blake used to say. The perception for you begins to change because the, the eyes aren't just the only filters. It's the mind itself that allows you to see or not see. And you can also discover how we get programmed and release the old memes. In other words, those old mind viruses that no longer serve us. And how to free your mind and live in the now, in the present moment, and be your true self. And when you feel that way, when you are connected at that level, everything in your life begins to change because once you are in that centered place, that place of peace within yourself, you are in flow. And you can be part of the creation of a new empowering society. In other words, as we move forward, we need new leaders. We need new people to rise to the surface and rise to the top to bring us through these times that there's uncertainty and there's fear and there's deception and there's division. But when you tune into these deeper parts of you, you begin to get a sense that there isn't quite the level of division that the news says we have. It's within ourselves. And if we allow it, of course it occurs. But when we step back from it, you become empowered and you begin to be the change, as Gandhi would say, that we seek. So the key question is, are you willing to step back and notice? Are you willing to really become the observer of your own thoughts, to become aware in ways that even in the old days might have been difficult for you. Now with even more stress in our lives and even more distractions, are you willing to just literally like detach from the, the noise 
the things that distract you the most. And that noticing is your true self-awakening. The more you do it, the more that you create what Rick Jero calls regenerative trust. The more you trust it, the stronger it becomes. And now you've got that stronger connection on the inside of you. You feel aligned, you feel focused, and you feel moving forward is a simple process. So the effects of mind viruses are t they take over bits of your mind and they pull you in different directions because they distract you from what's most important to you in life and they cause confusion, stress, and even despair. So what we're really talking about is the erosion of our own awareness. At first, it's small interruptions. You don't even notice them. Like the frog in the pot of water is beginning to slowly turn up that volume of heat and that level of heat. It doesn't notice it because it's small. It's very subtle. But over time, it begins to change our thoughts and our emotions because it sits there in the back of our minds. And it just begins to add more pressure and more stress as the days go on. And there's a term that I learned recently called acrasia. What it really means is the weakness of the will. And Charles Taylor once wrote, the, the, the danger is not despotic control, in other words, by an autocrat or a monarch, but fragmentation. That is, a people increasingly less capable of forming a common purpose and carrying it out. So what does he really mean there? That if we see divisions in our society and we're not taking the lead in our own culture and our own communities, then we're letting the people who create the mind viruses and the memes, which we'll talk about later, literally form the opinions of the body politic, of our society, of our culture. And then we have capitulated. And it's the weakness of the will that he talks about with acrasia. So let's talk about something that's really kind of interesting. Our own GPS becomes faulty over time because we allow our attention to be deceived, to be taken away by these things that we call technology and texts and social media, et cetera. And we're gonna go into more detail about this. Our attention is veered off center, so we're not even feeling like ourselves anymore. You're wondering why. Like, you know, ah, I was just feeling good when I got up this morning, and as little as an hour later, maybe two hours later, but eventually it creeps in. You've had text messages, you've had social media broadcasts, you've had emails, and there is a point of overwhelm we all hit, even before noon, that we're just not quite ourselves, and we've lost our, not entire focus, but bits of it. And that acrasia has begun to set in because the will that was originally there as you woke up begins to diminish slowly but surely. And the virus, unfortunately, becomes the guide. In other words, the mind virus. That it thinks that it's driving the bus. And then we believe it. We feel like, oh, well, I feel stressed. I should go in that direction. Or someone has called my attention to something. So I'm supposed to pay attention to that because they said the sky is falling. They said that there's a problem here. It could be in your business. It could be in your family system. It could be something that doesn't even include you, but you saw it as a news blip on your, on your phone when you opened up your phone at nine in the morning or eight in the morning. Suddenly the, the virus of the world, the coronavirus, whatever virus it is, begins to be the focus when it really does nothing but distract us. And then we begin to hit sensory overload. Too much information. You literally begin to get pulled apart and splintered and fragmented as Charles Taylor said, and it begins to dull our senses. It takes away from our light. And it really is an erosion of our awareness. And this is what the focus of this webinar is all about. Number one, sensing that our awareness is being pulled away from us, that suddenly our light begins to be slowly dimmed because we gave it away to someone else or something else. And the mind virus came in. And it literally begins to dumb down our DNA. And we won't go into detail about the DNA piece of this, but if we allow this to occur over long periods of time, we are giving away our power. We're giving away our own, not just attention, but what comes behind that attention. And often it's without our permission or our knowing. And the virus begins to take control of our minds. And even in some cases our bodies because that stress begins to set in. So there are three, quote, shadows of distraction. There's distraction in the moment. In other words, something that's just momentary. You get a quick little, um, something that pulls your attention away. It might be a text message. It might be a coworker. It might be something 
on a weekend that one of your kids or something, something happens and it's just a momentary distraction. That's not so bad. But then it goes deeper. The more mind viruses that come in, they distract from our goals and our choices. In other words, the intent in our lives. But when it gets deeper, we begin to lose our sense of our values and our dreams. And this is beginning to be a significant issue in our society today that people are being led by whoever provides the news to them, whoever provides the, the information to them, whatever it is that you tune into most, you become. And so these are ways that we can become distracted and lose our sense of who we are. Now, there's a term called epistemic distractions. It sounds kind of like a big word, but in essence, it's the hijacking of the will. And James Williams talks about this in his book called Stand Out of Our Light. It's an amazing book. It's kind of philosophical. But in essence, he says, epistemic distraction is the diminishment of underlying capacities that enable a person to define or pursue their goals. So what does that really mean? That the more we are distracted by all these forms of technology and other forms of mind viruses, we are pulled away from our own will and our ability to define what our choice and our purpose, our goals and our dreams are all about. That one really shook me because if you look into your own life, you know this is beginning to happen in some way. Maybe not yourself, but people in your family. Now, a Hewlett Packard study found that distractions decreased IQ scores of their workers by 10 points. That's twice the decline recorded for those smoking marijuana. Hmm. And examples include Facebook and Instagram and email. And by the time your day's maybe not even an hour or two old, you've gone through almost all of these and there goes your focus for many of us. But there's also something called clickbait and that is the websites that you're drawn to or some of the little ads or things that show up on your phones and on your devices that are, it draws your attention because it says something about the coronavirus or it says something about here's a way to uh, clear cancer or whatever it might be. And it's really not a true website to provide information. It's there to provide something where it creates a discrepancy or conflict. And that's what clickbait does is it draws you in. And so you begin to doubt your own self or think that there's a problem when there was no problem that existed to begin with. So talking more about this hijacking of the will, when you begin to read stories or videos and things like Facebook that get you emotionally upset, James Williams talks about in his book called Stand Out of Our Light that this is actually something that companies like Facebook could really care less about because all they care about is they can supply the information to you that will grab your attention, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. They really don't care. And so the more upset you get, the more you lose track of who you are and you, you have that fragmentation that we've talked about. You begin to lose your own sense of your awareness so if you read a story, or if you see a video, or something that really dramatically affects you, now you've given away your power to that video and that source, thinking that it's you when it's not. And that begins to be something that can be very troubling for all of us. And other examples are news programs that are telling stories of death, suffering, but also just the standard stuff like the politics that are going on in the world. And other forms of it are friends and family, and their negative energies, or let's say energies that they they're not negative, but they picked up something along their day. It's not their fault any more than it would be your fault if you had a traffic challenge during the day and you were stressed and then you called a friend and they kind of took on some of your stress. It happens to all of us. So let's talk about how we get programmed because now we're getting deeper into this. It happens in our families. It happens in our schools, the media, any form of media, but also social media, especially social media because that's where mind viruses really begin to catch Hold. And a lot of those mind viruses are based on survival and fear, the ones that really begin to take our attention away. For whatever reason, we're drawn to that kind of information. And there's an emotional cost to when this occurs within us. We feel frustration and tension and overwhelm. Now, let's discuss the power of memes, which are like mind viruses, but they're deeper. In essence, a meme is a belief or an experience held by large groups of people. And examples are fashions and stories and phrases that are sown through our popular culture. And they're unquestioned. Whether they're true or not, they pass around these groups of people. 
So a simpler definition is a unit of information in a mind whose existence influences events such that more copies of itself get created in other minds. That's the essence. That's the most basic description of what a meme is. It just gets passed around from person to person. The power of memes are to a human's behavior what our genes are to our bodies. Internal representations of knowledge that result in outward effects of the world. Some examples, terms like LOL, the smiley face, emojis, Facebook, Google, iPhones, those are all memes. There's Siri, there's Alexa, there's also fake news, and that's become a meme unto itself. Now, there are memes that distort perception. These, this is where it gets kind of nasty. When you read stories and you are hearing things that are contentious or struggles about you're either with us or you're against us, or it's about one party versus the other, or something's happening to your kid at school because the other kid at school is a bad kid. It's kind of like an us versus them mentality. And that distorts our perception in the moment and begins to take away from our energy and our light. Other forms that distort are manipulation. And there is covert manipulation that goes on all the time. But I'm talking about there's subtle manipulation too. Like someone may accidentally share a story with you, share some stress with you that manipulates your opinion. Now, in political ads and in the news, that often happens because they know exactly what they're feeding us and why they're feeding it to grab our attention. And there's an old phrase by Caesar that said, if you want to grab people's attention and get them in fear, and you can hold them there as long as you want. So the virus of the mind, once it takes hold, it spreads. And we have a loss of awareness and anxiety. In essence, the virus becomes us. In other words, that thought that, we didn't even know why we kind of like stepped back from uh, what's, wait, whoa, whoa, what's going on with me today? Why am I suddenly drained? Why do I feel stressed? Because that energy of these little viruses of the mind, these mind viruses begin to take over. So they leach away our purpose and our focus. They begin to literally like scrape away on our energy field. And they're shiny objects that distract us as we go through our days. And they also affect our children. And quite a big concern is the unchecked spread of mind viruses shows up most alarmingly in the state of our children today. Because many of our young people seem to be losing their sense of values and taken off in some very unusual and unsettling directions. If you really think about that, that's one of the things that we should be paying attention to most. Let's say you feel really good and you're going, hmm, I don't think I've got any mind viruses, which is not true, by the way, and we'll talk more about that. But to the extent that it affects our children is what we should truly be paying attention to because, as you know, they, they are our future. They're going to sway the next election. They're going to steer us in the directions of course correcting for some of the things that we've made mistakes of in our generation. So there's this thing I call the disconnection paradox. We've been brainwashed, but without our permission? How is that possible? We're very intelligent people. Some of the most intelligent people I know are often stressed and they're, they don't even know why. It, they've gotten to a point in their day where something happened, something affected their mind. That mind virus kind of like, it checked them. It, it, it kicked into the back of their consciousness. And now it's as if something has taken over the machine. Well, what if? Now here comes some of the good news. What if there is a simple way to become clear and present? To disinfect the mind, literally. It's not just a metaphor. What if you could detect what it is that holds you back or that's been taking away your awareness and your consciousness and your focus and be able to literally disinfect those mind viruses and those memes that don't serve you any longer? And then what if you could strengthen your awareness by having those old mind viruses removed, those old beliefs, those old programs, even when distractions occur. In other words, using those distractions to fuel you to come back into the present moment. This is where it gets amazingly powerful because you know what it's like to be stressed. You know what it's like to be off center. You know what it's like to not feel connected on the inside. What if everything that distracts you or pulls you away from your center and your light that you could learn how to use that negative energy or that negative influence to actually strengthen you and bring you closer to your purpose and your center. 
what kind of breakthrough would that be for you? So if you see this graph of that downward bending curve, there's an inflection point that begins to happen. Once you begin to notice and just tune into how you feel, an inflection point begins to occur. And that inflection point is the beginning of the new paradigm for you individually, but us as a society. Because the more of us that do this, there's a tipping point that is reached. That's when the news no longer controls your opinions. That's when negative events, feelings, or thoughts, no matter where they come from, inside or outside, no longer control how you feel, how you act, or how you behave. And this begins to be the turning point, the inflection point for the rest of your life. So they show up in new ideas that come from you. You'll be meditating, let's say, in the morning. Let's say, let's say you're not a good meditator. Let's say you tried meditation and it didn't work. When I share more of what this whole thing's about, you can discover new ideas out of thin air or due to the old challenges that used to pull away from your center that now drive you to those new ideas and new breakthroughs. And new leaders will come from this, and you might be one of them. In fact, right now, within you, is a, is a leader that you may not even realize. And we're waiting for you to show up. We're waiting for you to wake up some of that, that deep core knowing within you that when it starts shining, other people are going to notice. They're going to smile at you saying, what are you doing differently? This, there's something amazing going on within you. And I hear this all the time from my friends because that happens to people. And so more of this inflection point, there are new movements that are going to be created. Whole new connections of people that begin to come together that stand for something rather than standing against something. And there's a huge difference between those two intents. And of course, new memes will be created. New empowering thoughts and images and little thoughts that, that pass through our culture that begin to strengthen our culture again rather than taking away from it. And I call this the new meme of awareness. It's a connection from within yourself, within all of us. And when you feel it, you know it you feel a centered presence. You feel connected in ways maybe you haven't felt in years. It's a remembering who you are. It's connecting to your true self. It's deeper than just a normal meditation because now your observer self begins to be the driver in your life rather than the default programming of your subconscious, of your past, of the old memes, and of the old mind viruses. So something that I promised to talk about was the purpose of negative feelings and emotions as well. Now, this goes back to something that I discovered a long time ago, going on about 20 years ago. And I remember reading a book, and it shared that behind every negative emotion or negative experience in our lives, there is a positive intent. And when I read that, it was almost like it was the perfect moment for me to hear that because all the guilt and all the resentment and all the blame that I felt for all the challenges in my life literally just kind of like were pulled from my shoulders and I thought, if that's true, that every negative feeling or experience in my life has a positive intent, then I'm free. And what if you knew that to be true for yourself? What if everything in your life that pulled you away from your center had positive intent behind it? Because now you are become aware of it. Now you seek that truth within yourself. Now you begin to find why you created the negative event or allowed a negative thought or meme or mind virus into your life. And you begin to have that kind of awareness. You begin to have, as Vernon Howard called, a perception into the deception. An idea that now you realize that you are the driver of your life, not the victim of it. So these negative feelings are actually messages from your higher self. They are opportunities for you to grow. They are opportunities to move forward in life. And yet most of us take those negative emotions, feelings, and setbacks as something that kind of like stops us. And in the last 10 to 20 years of my life, especially with some of the incredibly negative events that have happened to me, I kind of like stepped back and just said, you know what, there's something very powerful going on here. My mind does not understand it. But my higher self was guiding me through the whole process and I just surrendered. I let go because I knew I didn't know what the, complete truth was, I only saw a facsimile of it. I saw a piece of it, but not the whole picture. And now my higher self guides me, and I know it can guide you as well 
to listen through the darkness or the negative energies and find the truth behind it. Like, why did I create this in my life? If that began to be the mantra for yourself, or, or another way of saying it is, what's the gift in this? You will then transform. I don't care how strong the negativity shows up in your life. You'll find the truth and the peace and the light behind it. And these messages, these negative feelings or emotions, begin to be lessons for your growth. And now is the time. Now is the time for this great awakening to rediscover our truth, to awaken to our own knowings within us. There's knowledge that you learn with your mind and that you can learn through books and programs and all sorts of occurrences, but the real truth is within yourself. And there's no teacher that can teach you anything new. That teacher can only help you rediscover that which you know about yourself deep down and to find serenity and peace and joy within yourself. And so the paradigm shift that I speak about is rising above the mind and tuning into what used to be integrated, but for whatever reason, we've kind of capitulated. We gave up the heart-mind connection, but now it's beginning to come back into alignment again. In Chinese, they have a word called xin. It's spelled X-I-N. And they don't see the heart or the mind as separate. They see it as one. So it's like saying the heart-mind, as opposed to the way we speak about it here in the West. There's the heart and there's the mind. And as you probably are aware, in our society, we worship the mind and the heart gets kind of like pushed back in this back seat, sometimes in the trunk. And quite often it just becomes silenced. And there is this, the true cause of all the frustration in our lives. We don't hear our own heart's wisdom. But the paradigm shift is all about you beginning to be enlightened by your heart. And as a wonderful sage with me years ago, she worked with me doing some energetic and some belief clearing work. And she said, Paul, I want you to tune into this phrase. I now allow my heart to be the, the flow. In other words, like that my mind surrenders to my heart's knowing and my, my, heart's, my heart's awareness. The mind isn't in control anymore. And how she said it was so profound to me. That's when I began to really, truly let go. I thought I was doing meditation pretty well before that. But that question to me, can I allow my mind to be the the follower of my heart, and to let my heart drive my awareness. And it changed me for, from that point forward. So in this paradigm shift, your mind is set free. You are now in charge and you are the director of your life. And the negative emotions you used to feel release. And even if they try to stick around for a while, you have a perception into the deception, as Vernon Howard once said you begin to step back and you notice and you go, hmm, I sense what's really happening here. It's flowing, but it's not going to stay. In other words, it came to me, but I'm not going to make any home for that emotion inside of me or that old vibration. I'm going to let it go by doing something as simple as breathing. And I'll teach you that in just a few moments. Because you're in the present, you're in the now. Not as a concept, but as an experience. When you have the profound experience of the moment, and it may not feel profound at first, but you begin to sense your own emotions. You begin to feel your own feelings. You begin to allow yourself to feel your own feelings. Now you are the observer of your life and you're letting life teach you, take you in whatever direction, to the left and to the right, forward or backward, and it doesn't drive you anymore. You're learning from it each step of the way. So let's talk about what I call the serenity effect. What is it? In essence, this is something that a Vision came to me about 10 years ago when we were in Sedona. We were doing a group experience there for one of our retreat groups. And we were doing Qigong and something appeared to me. I had my eyes closed and I could see the globe and I could see that there was, uh, there was an energy field around the globe and it came in a fraction of an instant. And so when I came out of that little vision, I wrote down the ideas that came to me and it has been 10 years since then and now this serenity program is now coming into shape and it's going to be ready soon. In essence, the way it can help you is that it can help you, first of all, get in touch. Get in touch with whatever it is that's driving you to distraction, whatever has pulled you away from your center, whatever it is that has been stopping you from being who you are and what you're capable of doing. And to give you an experience of serenity. So let's do that right now. 
So close your eyes for just a moment. I'm going to teach you something called the serenity breath. And as you're listening to my voice, imagine it's early in the morning, right before the sun rises. And you can see the entire horizon. This is with your eyes closed. And just before the sun begins to rise over the horizon, you have a sense of being tuned into your body. You sense your body. You take a nice, deep, slow, cleansing breath in the anticipation of that sun rising over the horizon. Now it just begins to peek over and you see that warm glow, that yellow, orange, beautiful glow of the sun as it peeks over the horizon. As you get in touch with your body and you let go of the mind, place your hand on your heart and breathe in that light and that love, that unconditional divine presence. and the feeling of serenity within you. The light reminds you of your light. Whatever you observe is within you. And as you allow that beautiful light and divine love and presence to flow through you, it touches every part of you, every cell, every nuance, every tendon, every bone, every structure, every part of your mitochondria, which is the light within you. And taking all the time you need, before you open your eyes, get a sense of what that feels like within you. And let yourself make that ha sound on the out breath because that means that you're releasing something that no longer serves you. The in breath brings in inspiration. The out breath sends out or surrenders that which no longer serves you. So as you begin to open your eyes, that's a little experience of the serenity effect. And the program I'm about to present or to launch into the world is called Serenity. And I call it experiencing the stillness within. So what is serenity? How can it help you? It helps you calm the busy mind. It helps you dissolve stress. And you know the busy mind is the cause of it. If you've been listening to any of my webinars or my teleseminars over the years or reading my newsletter, you know that that I used to have the busy mind so bad that even when I meditated, it wouldn't work. I mean, I would be in a group of meditators and I'd be the only one that could not relax. Now, I can relax in an instant. And I was a very, very frustrated, overly uh, pensive person back in my 20s and 30s. And so the Serenity Program helps you calm that busy mind, also helps you dissolve the stress that's underneath it. That's what causes the busy mind. And a big one, now we get deeper. So it's not just a meditation program. It also helps you clear the unresolved emotions that are there under the surface that are simmering. They've been festering, you know, kind of like an old wound that hasn't been able to heal. And they try to clear themselves and it feels like stress. And our natural response is to push them back because we don't know how to deal with them. Unfortunately, that's called repression. And the more that happens over time, it's suppression. And it begins to be what a author by the name of John Ruskin called self-abuse. The more you push those feelings away, you actually are causing your own form of self-abuse. And of course, we don't want to do that. So serenity can help you clear those and get even deeper. And also detect and clear mind viruses. And this could be one of the biggest things for you because now you're beginning to say, okay, hmm, yeah, what's been driving me in these weird directions? What's been pulling away and splintering my energy as the days go on and the evenings? And why don't I wake up as enthused as I used to with the energy that I used to have? So the serenity program is in essence made up of modules that help you discover the serenity process that helps you tune in and process these feelings. The serenity meditation, which is just awesome. When you do it on a daily basis, you will feel such a refreshing feeling. You'll have a smile on your face again. You'll feel connected to yourself. Those viruses that used to float around, they won't find a home in you because they just bounce right off because you're so aware and you're so tuned in. And you'll also learn how to clear the negative emotions that we talked about before. And you get to be so good at it that you can do it for your friends. Without calling yourself a therapist, you can just say, hey, you know what? Come on over here just for a minute. Close your eyes for a minute. You want to try something? Yeah. And that person frees themselves of the emotion that used to bother them. Who knows for how long? Because you help them find their own light. How inspiring. How purposeful is that? 
and also how to create a serenity field. This is one of the coolest things. So imagine waking up in the morning and you are self-directed and you're already in a good state. You've done, let's say, the serenity meditation before you even got out of bed. You're feeling pretty good, right? So let's say that you want to know that your home has a nice harmonic to it. In other words, a nice energy field. So when people walk into your home, especially with you being in that home, that you'd like to create a field that is empowering, that is self-reinforcing of love and of light. So let's say for your kids, this might be something that might be the biggest reason for you or your loved ones. So I'll teach you how to create a serenity field so that every time you connect with it, it strengthens the field in your home. This may seem to be somewhat of a different concept if you haven't studied, let's say, quantum physics or energy medicine, things like that. But you know what? It's actually really cool. And the power of the serenity field is like a white hole instead of a black hole. That It absolves, that it, it sucks in everything that is darkness, anything that is negative. It pulls in everything that is unlike itself and it transmits, transmutes it into light. And it's a field that creates from your heart. If you look at that picture on the right-hand side there, and it creates a field that emanates outside of you. It touches everyone who you touch. What a powerful reason for you to tune in to your own essence, to the serenity field within you, which is within your heart. And when you experience serenity, you're relaxed. Your body vibrates at a higher frequency because you're in your core. You're in your essence. And as you gaze over the horizon and you see that sun as it begins to rise in the morning or at the end of the day, you can do the serenity meditation and you, you can see that beautiful feeling of that sunset. Now you remember your essence and your connection and who you truly are. A child of God and of the universe that has never lost its connection, it forgot it temporarily because the mind stepped in and kind of forgot itself. So serenity in essence, it helps you meditate more deeply, yes, but it also helps you clear unresolved emotions. It helps you connect to something greater than yourself. It helps you remember who you truly are on the inside. So who is serenity for? It's for people that are office workers who are stressed out. It's for couples who need to communicate a little bit better. It's for people who want to meditate and get better at it. And it's also for kids because it's that simple. And who better than to help in, in terms of their future, but our kids and this current generation. So in essence, now is the time for serenity. And if you see this world map here, this is part of my vision. You can see there's these little star points here. I'm going to kind of like highlight them with, the, with my mouse if you can see that. And these are all the people across the world. This is the beginning of it that are using serenity. And you can join in. And as you join into the serenity field and the meditation groups and the serenity groups that form across the globe, not just the United States or not just in the country that you're in, now you become a vision greater than yourself. That's when the memes begin to shift. That's when the mind viruses begin to bounce off of us, no matter how detracting they are, no matter how negative they are. Because you're now part of something that is bigger than yourself. That's what I'm doing here. That's my drive behind this purpose and this project. And as it, it's been for a long time, but now it's even more formal. So I invite you to consider what serenity might be able to do for you to be able to relax, to be able to tune into your authentic self, to be able to let go of the mind, tune into your heart, and become and remember who you truly are. That is my invitation to you. I thank you for your time tonight. And watch out in your email for more information on the Serenity program. And until then, I bid you aloha and ahuiho, which means until we meet again. Bless you, my friend. Aloha.